we're going to look at multiplying and dividing rational expressions. I'll just take you back to when you learned how to multiply and divide uh, fractions. So let's say we had uh, the fraction 5 thirds times, oh, let's go 9 twentieths. Well, you remember that 5 thirds times 9 twentieths was really just 5 times 9. You'd multiply the numerators and then you'd multiply the denominators and then you'd reduce your fraction. Or we could have written these all as a product of their prime factors. So 9 is 3 times 3 and 20 is 2 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10 and we need another 2 there, don't we? So 5 times 9 is 5 times 3 times 3 and 20, 3 times 20 is the same as 3 times 2 times 5 times 2. So these are all prime factors and then we could cancel these things out. One of those go, one of those go. So we'd have 3 over 4, 2 times 2 as our final answer. So really this, the situation is similar when we're multiplying uh, rational expressions. So I have a rational expression here times another rational expression here. So this would be 2x squared times x squared y, this numerator times this numerator over this denominator times this denominator. And this is like a 1 coefficient here, so 2 times 1 is 2. We have x squared times x squared, which is x to the power of 4. Remember the shortcut rules, we add the exponents. And we also have a y here. And down below we have 3 times 4, which is 12. x times x is x squared. And y times y squared is y cubed. And so now what we need to do is simply reduce the fraction. So 2 twelfths is the same as 1 sixth. You have x to the 4 in the numerator divided by x squared. That'll leave x squared in the numerator. And if we have 1y in the numerator and 3y's in the denominator, that'll leave a y squared in the denominator. So this would leave 1 times x squared, which is x squared, over 6y squared. So really multiplying a rational expression is a matter of multiplying your numerators together, and then that'll leave you with one rational expression, because we've multiplied them together, and then we can re reduce that. And the same, same things applies with uh, giving your non-permissible values. So it's just we happen to have two denominators to work with. So in the original expression you can see here x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. That would be the non-permissibles in the first expression. In the second expression they actually end up being the same thing. x can't be 0 and y can't be 0. So collectively we would say combining these together and looking at all the options it's x can't be 0 and y can't be 0. Those would be our non-permissibles. So here's a rational expression here. Here's a rational expression here. And let's say we've got to determine the non-permissible values. Multiply this and simplify it. So the first step is to factor all of your expressions. You need to do this in order to multiply it and you want to you need to do this in order to uh, determine your non-permissible value. So here we have a trinomial so two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to minus 2 would be negative 5 and positive 3. So there's the numerator of that expression factored. Here we have a difference of squares so x and x, the square root of 25 is 5, 1 plus 1 minus. So there's the first express expression factored. In the second one, we got another trinomial here. So two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to 10 are x plus 5 and x plus 5. 5 and 5 multiply to 25 and add to 10. And in the denominator, we simply have a common factor of 2, which we'll take out. 
and that leaves us with x plus 3. At this step, I want to identify my non-permissibles. So in the first expression here, looking at these two, we can see x cannot equal negative 5, because negative 5 plus 5 would be 0, or x cannot equal positive 5, because 5 minus 5 would be 0. So x can't equal plus or minus 5. And in the second one, here's a denominator. Remember, we can't divide by 0. So here, x cannot equal negative 3, because negative 3 plus 3 would be 0. So we've identified our non-permissibles. Our non-permissible values are x cannot equal plus or minus 5 or negative 3. And so now we can go ahead and multiply. So we have x minus 5 times x plus 3 in the, in the numerator of the first one times the numerator of the second expression. So these would be all of our factors in our numerator. And then we have x plus 5, x minus 5, 2, and x plus 3 in our denominator. Now we can cancel out our, our uh, like factors. So here's an x minus 5 and there's one down below. So those will cancel. Um, here's an x plus 3, that'll cancel with the x plus 3. Here's an x plus 5, that'll cancel with the x plus 5. So it looks like what we'd be left with is x plus 5 divided by 2. We'd have x plus 5 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. So let's summarize how we multiply rational expressions. So to multiply rational expressions, the first thing we do is factor the numerators and the denominators. So if this was the question here, factor, nothing to factor down there, nothing to factor up here. Here we have a difference of squares, so x minus 3, x plus 3. Now that I have it factored, I can identify the non-permissible values that would be in the denominators here. So here we have x cannot equal 0, and over here we have x cannot equal plus or minus 3. Now after we've factored it, we can write all the factors of the numerators and all the factors of the denominators. So up top, we'd have 2 times 15, that's 30. And we have an x cubed as a factor, and we have an x minus 3 as a factor. So we have 30, x cubed, and x minus 3. Those are all up top in the numerator. And in the denominator, all of our factors are 5 and x, and x minus 3, and x plus 3. And once we have written all the factors in the numerator and all the factors in the denominator, now we can cancel our common factors. So first of all, with the coefficients, the numbers here, 30 divided by 5, that's 6. x cubed divided by x to the power, that's like a 1. So shortcut rule is subtract the exponents, so x6, sorry, x squared, 3 minus 1, x squared. And then these would cancel out, the x minus 3s. So we would have 6x squared over x plus 3 with our non-permissible values of 0 and plus or minus 3. Well, what about dividing? Dividing things. So let's go back, before we look at dividing the rational expressions, let's go back and look again at how we would divide fractions. And you remember that when we're dividing, we change this to a time sign by taking the reciprocal of the second fraction. So we have 2 thirds times 9 fourths. And then it became exactly the same as multiplying. So 9 was 3 times 3, and 4 was 2 times 2. And then we could cancel our factors, and we're left with 3 over 2. And so looking at how we would divide rational expressions, here we have a rational expression divided by a rational expression. We would do the same concept applies here. We would, we would take the first term, and we would change this question to a multiplying by taking the reciprocal of the second term. 
or the second expression. So first term stays the same, change to a time sign by taking the reciprocal of the, the second term or the second expression. So really dividing rational expressions is essentially the same as multiplying rational expressions. We just have one extra step and that is to take the reciprocal of the second expression. And now it becomes the same thing where we would make sure everything is factored. So common factor, whoops, not of 10. Let's take out a 5 there. And down here we can take a 4x out and that would leave x minus 3. Yeah, 4x squared minus 12x. And now we would do um, all our terms in a numerator which is 10 x minus 3, 2x minus 3, those are all of our factors in the numerator. And the denominator we have 5 times 4 which is 20x squared, x minus 3. So now cancelling our factors, 10 twentieths is like 1 over 2. The x minus 3's would go, so we have 1 times 2x minus 3 over 2 times x squared, which is simply 2x minus 3 over 2x squared. Now keep in mind we can't cancel these 2's. This is part of a sum. It's 2x minus 3. Similarly we can't cancel the x's here because this is not a factor. It can't cancel terms if there's plus or minus signs uh, in front or behind the term. So that's how we would divide rational expressions, but there is one little thing that gets a little bit trickier for non-permissible values. So when we're dividing, when we have a fraction here divided by a fraction here, there's actually three things that need to be considered. There's actually three denominators here. I'm going to take this term, which is this, and I'm going to write it like, like this way instead. So we have this divided by this. So when you write it this way, it's clear that there's actually three places where we're, we're dividing. In the first question, it was this divided by this. So this expression here, 5x, cannot equal 0. In the second fraction, it's clear we have this divided by 10x minus 15. So this cannot equal 0. But this in itself is a fraction. We have this fraction divided by this. So if the numerator of this fraction was 0, if 4x squared minus 12x was 0, then we'd have 0 divided by whatever we get down here, which is 0. But that's, that's a problem with this fraction because we have this divided by 0. So that means that the numerator of this also can't be 0 because we would in effect be dividing all of this divided by 0 and that's not going to work. So when we're dividing rational expressions there's three things that can't be 0. This can't be 0 because then this divided by this is a problem. This can't be 0 because this divided by this is a problem and this can't be 0 because this whole expression divided by 0 is going to be a problem. So to find the non-permissible values, we've got three things that we've got to look at. So just going over here to my factored form, that means this can't be 0. So x cannot equal 0. This can't be 0, which means x cannot equal 3 over 2 if you take the 2x minus 3 and make it equal 0. When we add 3 to both sides, that's 2x equals 3 and then divide by 2. x can't equal 3 over 2. And then the other problem we have is is this one. So here x cannot equal 0 because 4 times 0 is a problem and x cannot equal 3 because 3 minus 3 is a problem. So this would simplify to this, but our non-permissible values would be 
x can't equal 0. 3 over 2, we've already got 0 and 3. So we have those three values as our non-permissible values. So to divide rational expressions, the first thing we need to do is take the reciprocal of the second rational expression, that's this one, and change the sign from a dividing to a timesing, multiplying. Whoop. Change it to a time sign, take the reciprocal of the second term, Oops, that's meant to be an x squared. And really then it's the same thing as, as a um, multiplying question. So we'd factor the numerator and denominator. Nothing to factor here. Nothing to factor there. But down here, two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to f 2 are plus 4 and negative 2. So at this everything factored, we want to determine the non-permissible values. So this is a potential problem because we're dividing by x. So x cannot equal 0. This, this is a problem because initially this was divided by x4. So here, again, x cannot equal 0. And then this is going to be a problem because this was initially x minus 2 divided by x divided by this. So if this becomes 0, we're dividing by 0. So here we'd say x cannot equal negative 4 and x cannot equal 2. So those are our non-permissible values. Now we can simply com collect all our like terms in the numerator. So x minus 2 and x4 and in the denominators we've got x and x plus 4 4 and x minus 2. So now we can cancel these common factors that are occurring in the numerator and the denominator. So x minus 2's are going to go. Here we have 1x down here and 4 of them up here so that'll leave just 3x's up top. So we would have x cubed over x plus 4. Again we can't cancel these x's because this is part of a sum and we can only cancel terms when there's a time sign in between them. So we would get x cubed over x plus 4 where x cannot equal 0. We got that twice, negative 4 or 2. So usually we write it in smallest to largest, so negative 4, 0, and 2. So that's how we would divide rational expressions.